Hello and welcome to PGTV News. Here are our top stories. Lake and Electric power bills may go up. Find out why and by how much. We talked to the manager of the Raymond Theater in Frostproof. Find out about its history and upcoming events. Hello and welcome to PGTV News. I'm Stephen Barnes. And I'm Lauren Lingell. Thank you for tuning in. Our report begins in Lakeland, where residential and business customers of Lakeland Electric may see an increase in their bill. On August 6th, the Lakeland City Commission will vote on a 3% increase on residential homes. Some business owners may see their rates go up by 19% under the proposed rate plan. We will stay on top of this story and update you in the future. The Polk State Corporate College is offering employer-based training. The courses will be conducted in six-week boot camp sessions. During these sessions, participants will receive free training and earn valuable certifications that will help them land a job in manufacturing. The next sessions are scheduled to run from July 23rd to August 31st, and then from August 13th to September 17th. Training takes place Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Polk State Clear Springs Advanced Technology Center, 310 Technology Drive in Bartow. Students are required to complete an academic assessment and attend one orientation session prior to the first day of classes. For more information and to secure a spot for one of the sessions, contact 863-297-1010 and dial extension 4676 or 4680. The City of Haines City, in partnership with the University of South Florida, Florida Polytechnic University, and Intel Corporation, presents STEAM Forward, camp for local middle school age children passionate about computer technology, engineering, gaming, programming, and robotics. STEAM Camps, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math, is scheduled for July 17th from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. at Lake Eva Event Center located at 799 Johns Avenue, Haines City. The one-day camp, which will include a light breakfast and a lunch. The purpose of this camp is to introduce students to professionals in the STEAM career fields, learn about education and relevant career paths, and engage in a variety of hands-on activities and challenges to enhance collaboration and problem solving. Spots are limited to 50 students. To register or for more information, please contact Haines City Parks and Rec at 863-421-3700. Did you guys have like an emphasis on on steam when you were in uh, high school and no, elementary school? No, I feel like I, obviously I'm from a different state, so I come down here and it, it's like they're doing all these really awesome things, and yeah. I feel like you know. I'll tell you what, if I had robotics when I was in high school, I would have ate that up it like nobody's business. It it certainly would have been an interesting thing to get into younger. And steam camp. I mean, they're even going to feed you breakfast and lunch, so I mean, you're feeding your brain and your body, right? I'm pretty sure everybody knows I'm already, I'm already in on anything <laughs> that gives me food. And on to another note, uh, recently grove workers across Florida stripped a few orange trees bare while the fruit was still dark green and about the size of a golf ball. You may wonder what is wrong with the fruit, but workers were actually following the recommendation of consultant Elizabeth Steger, who has been using this stripping method to estimate the size of the next season's citrus crop since the early 1990s. After Steger counts fruit from about 500 Florida orange trees, she will release her projection of the size of the coming orange crop in August. That is so fascinating. Like, I have never thought about that. I always wonder where they came up with those citrus projections. Like, how in the world are they going to know how many oranges are going to, you know, grow? But right. I guess that's how. That is very interesting. The Deer and Turkey Expo is coming to Lakeland on July 20th through the 22nd at the RP Funding Center. Visitors will see the latest innovations and equipment. There will be seminars from field experts on topics including habitat management, food plots, and deer and turkey hunting strategies and techniques. The expo will run from 2 to 8 p.m. on July 20th. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on July 21st and from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on July 22nd. For more information, visit www.deerinfo.com. And speaking of wildlife, um, residents of Winter Haven may soon see a new city Ooh. symbol. The city's Cultural Arts Advisory Board has recommended that the Sand Hill Crane become the official city symbol. 
Judy Cleves, who is the chairperson of the Cultural Arts Advisory Board, said one of our committee members did the research and thought that the Sandhill Crane would be a good representative. She goes on to say, we want something pretty and something different. It is a beautiful bird. It is a beautiful bird. We've got these uh, three sandhill cranes that walk around our neighborhood and they, you know, and they do their thing. We always call them the, uh, the, the gang of three. They just kind of <laughs> hang out together and pretty birds. So. We want to remind residents that Eagle Lake Loop Road in Winter Haven is closed and will remain closed till early December. This is due to the transportation improvement project extending along Eagle Lake Loop Road from just east of the intersection at Rifle Range Road to about 450 feet east of the canal. Through traffic will be detoured around the work zone along Rifle Range Road and Eloise Loop Road. The project requires the placement of pilings to support the new bridge and the county warned residents should expect an increased noise level during late July or early August. You know, increasing roads is a big part of building out infrastructure and that's needed for growth in the county. This is, this is civilization. Mm -hmm. Businesses need infrastructure to grow and along those lines, we've got Benicia Frazier with this week's business tip. Take it away, Benicia. This is Benicia Frazier with your quick business tip, here to answer all of your business related questions. Here's how to turn your passion for food into a successful home-based cottage food business. Cottage foods have gained a lot of interest as people look to make money from home or supplement their income. Florida law allows individuals to use their home kitchens to produce for sale certain food products that can be sold directly to consumers. So what is a cottage food? A cottage food is a food product produced in a home kitchen, such as cakes, pies, breads, and cereals. Second homes, vacation homes, motorhomes, or outbuildings such as sheds or barns are not allowed for food production. Does a cottage food operator require a license or permit? Cottage food operators require no license or permit from the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services and are not inspected by any state government entity. However, cottage food operators are not exempt from city county regulations. So, always check with the zoning agency in your city or county regarding your home business requirements. Where can I sell my cottage products? Cottage food operators must sell directly to the consumer or the consumer's private event venue. Cottage food products can be sold at farmers markets, green markets, flea markets, and roadside stands, provided there are no other food items at the stand that require a food permit. Cottage food operators are prohibited to sell to local restaurants, grocery or convenience stores, mobile vendors, mail order, wholesalers, distributors, or across state lines. Lastly, all cottage food products offered for sale at the public must be prepackaged with an affixed label that includes name and address of cottage food operation, name and ingredients of product, net weight, food allergen labeling, and nutritional information. The required cottage food statement made in a cottage food operation that is not subject to Florida's food safety regulations is also mandatory. Additional information regarding your cottage food business can be found at www.freshfromflorida.com. Don't forget to visit our webpage at www.polk-county.net and select Community and Small Business Assistance or feel free to call our office at 863-534-5915. Well, we have to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll have a cool story about the Raymond Theater and Frostproof, tell you about its history and upcoming events. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He knows he's a pretty big deal. How could you not love him?
Did you know parking over tall, dry grass can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Do you want to retire like a champ? Just like legendary basketball star Uncle Drew? Don't do it like that, Uncle Drew! You're already acing the game. You've got your dream ride. Don't be slamming my door. Sorry about that. You just did the nah. same. Gotta get the boys. Your dream vacation and your dream team. And now you can make your retirement just as legendary. I get buckets. Get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. Welcome back to PGTV News. When it comes to Polk County, there are a lot of places with lots of history. We had a chance to talk to Violet Branson, manager of the Raymond Theater. Here's Sherry McCullough with the story. Frostproof, Florida, a town in Polk County, which is rich in history and has lovely people. We recently visited the Raymond Theater to find out more about its history and upcoming events. Here is Violet Branson to tell us more. Hi, my name is Violet Branson. I'm the office manager here at the Raymond Theater in downtown Frostproof. I'm here to talk to you today about our history and a little bit about what's going on at the theater. The theater was built in 1925 by Frank and Vera Thompson. They named it after their second son, Raymond. It was host to vaudeville shows, silent movies, and was the community's only theater until the 1960s when it finally closed down. In the early 2000s, the Frostproof community came together to raise funds in order to renovate the Raymond Theater. In 2007, the Raymond Theater was reopened and has since held various activities such as murder mystery dinners, musical tributes, and so much more. We host quarterly murder mystery dinner theaters here as well as a music series for tribute artists that runs January through April. Please join the Raymond Theater on July 21st for their quarterly murder mystery dinner titled Death Plays a Role. For more information, please visit www.raymondtheater.com. Well, Steve, what do you say we take uh, PGTV News on a little on a trip down to Frostproof I'll, and get this dinner what, theater going on? It sounds like fun. I've never actually been to one, but uh, I hear what they do there is pretty cool. Yeah, I, I need to be scared. It's been a while. <laughs> so. Mystery dinner. All right. Well, it's now time for our favorite segment here, Sports with Neil Duncan. Woo. Hey, thanks guys. I want to remind everyone to check the PGTV listings for weekly airings of Sports Central. When you tune in, you'll see a full hour featured guest, athlete spotlights, and so much more. You can also tune in to the radio version of Sports Central on Talk 96.7 or Talk 1430 WLKF every Tuesday morning from 7 to 8 a.m. and every Thursday from 5 to 6 p.m. Now let's get to your Polk County Sports News. Well, the top table in the USL Premier Development League Southeast Division got plenty tighter on July 7th as the Village's Soccer Club blanked the Lakeland Tropics 2 to nothing. The Tropics came into the game in first place but fell to 8-2-2 two two, with two games remaining on their regular season schedule. Had Lakeland won, they would have clinched their first ever playoff berth. They looked to get back on track on July 10th, however they were only able to notch a 1-1 tie against IMG Academy Bradenton. So it will all come down to the regular season finale at home on July 14th against Weston Football Club. A win would clinch a spot in the postseason for the Tropics. Only the top two teams in the Southeast qualify for the playoffs, so good luck to the Tropics. The Lakeland Flying Tigers continue to battle for the Florida State League North Division lead. They currently sit one game back of Dunedin with a second half record of 11-6. The Flying Tigers will have a six-game homestand coming up. It will be July 23rd through the 25th against Dunedin and July 27th through the 29th against Clearwater. Go Tigers! As always, you can go to visitcentralflorida.org or centralfloridasports.com for more information on things going on in Polk County. Back to you guys. Thank you for the sports report, Neil, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. Remember to tune in again next week for another installment of PGTV News. We'll see you next time.